In this video, we're going to watch a series of instructions as they progress through this five-stage architecture. Specifically, we're going to be looking at what happens to all of these interstage registers as our instruction progresses. What do each of these get set to? And what does that mean for our computation? In this case, I've got five different instructions here. And I'm going to be keeping track of all of those interstage registers that we've got. We have different sets of registers between each of our pipeline stages. So we have different number of registers between those stages as well. To get us started, I have some data in our registers and a little bit in our memory. And I've already started by filling in what the instruction register will have at the end of the first cycle for each of our instructions. So the first thing I'm going to be interested in is the program counter plus four register. This one takes the program counter, adds four to it, and just stores it into this interstage register. So I should take my current program counter, add four to it, and then store it into this register. Since that's all we do in the first stage, we're done. We've got both of the values for those two interstage registers. The second stage, we need to calculate a whole bunch of things. We'll have a number of control signals, as well as some of the data coming out of our registers, our sign extended immediate, and some of the fields from our instruction as well. So the function code for our add instruction is 20. We will get the data from stack pointer and register 0. Stack pointer currently has this data in it. Register 0, of course, has 0 in it. So I can copy that data in there. For the immediate, I would take the least significant 16 bits from the instruction and sign extend them. So in that case, the least significant 16 bits are the 1020 in hexadecimal. And that would mean I would just add a whole bunch of zeros in front of that. My destination register is V0. My RS register is stack pointer. And the RT register is register 0. I'll need to know what the ALU source is in the next cycle. So that will have to be stored in this register. And since I'll want to add the contents of data 1 and data 2, the ALU source would be 0. This isn't a memory read instruction or a memory write instruction, so both of those will be 0. And since I'm not going to read anything from memory, the mem to reg multiplexer will also be 0. I will want to write something back to the registers eventually, so that control signal will be 1. So you can notice that a number of these control signals won't be used anytime soon. Many of them are passed on to the fourth or even the fifth stage of the pipeline, but we'll need to store them in a register for the meantime. The second cycle, though, our second instruction comes in. So now we'll want to increment our program counter again. And as before, I've already converted the instruction into the machine language format. In cycle three, our first instruction gets to stage three. It's going to do some operation. It's doing some addition, and the results are not going to be zero. So that register will be zero. The result, though, is the stack pointer plus zero, so that will really just be whatever the stack pointer is already. We're not going to use data2, but that would be zero, because it would just be passed from the data2 register. Our destination register is still v0, our mem read signal is still zero, our mem write signal is still zero, m to reg is still zero, and register write will still be one. Now we've got our add immediate instruction. So the add immediate instruction doesn't actually have a function code, but we've still got stuff in those six bits, so we're going to take those and use those to fill in the function code field. Data one will come from t0, so t0 has the value of seven in it currently. Data 2 will come from S0. S0 has 15 in it. So even though I'm not actually going to use source 2 and data 2, I'm still going to get some data out on that line. And it's still going to be used to fill in that register. The immediate again 
is the sine extended lower 16 bits. Even if they're not immediately useful, which in this case they are, they correspond to negative 4. Destination register will be S0. RS field is T0. The RT field is S0. For ALU source, we will want to get sine extended immediate, so we'll set that multiplexer to 1. We're not doing a memory read instruction or a memory write instruction, so all three of those control signals will be 0, but I will want to write the results back to the registers in the end. For our third instruction, we just need to increment the program counter. I've already gotten the machine language instruction out of memory. Now we can move on to cycle 4. Cycle 4 will get something out for our read data, but since we're not actually doing a read instruction, we're not going to get anything meaningful out. We should just get a bunch of zeros. We're not actually going to go access memory. We will get a result from our ALU. It's really just whatever we had for our result before. And our destination register is still the same, phi zero. M to reg is still zero, and register write is still one. We're just continuing to pass those control signals down until we can actually use them. For our add immediate instruction, that's in stage three now. And we'd like to know if the results of our computation will be zero. So in this case, we're adding 7 to negative 4, and we will get 3 out. 3 is not 0, so the 0 line will be 0. Data 2 is still 15. Destination register is still S0. Memread is still 0. Memwrite is still 0. M to reg is still 0. And reg write is 1. Our third instruction reaches the instruction decode stage. Our function code will be the least significant six bits, even though they're not actually useful for this instruction. Data one will come from the stack pointer, which we had up here. Data two will come from S2, which is 17. Sign extended immediate is just four. Our destination register is S2. RS is the stack pointer. RT is S2. For our ALU source, we will want to use the sign extended immediate, so that means we'll set that control signal to 1. Again, we're not going to read from memory, but this time we are going to write to memory. Since we're not going to write anything back to the registers, we don't really care what our mem to reg multiplexer does, but we don't want to write anything back to the registers as a result. For our fourth instruction, we just get the instruction out of the instruction memory and increment the program counter. We can now move on to cycle 5. Our first instruction is just going to write all of its results back. So you can notice there are no more interstage registers here. We don't have any more of the purple rectangles that we might want to store data in. We're just storing data back to the registers in this cycle so there's nothing more for us to keep track of at this point. We could, however, update our actual registers over here. We're storing this data into V0, but we won't be using the interstage registers for this instruction anymore. Our add immediate instruction is not a memory read instruction, so again, we're not going to get anything meaningful out of the data memory. Our ALU result is just the same as what we had before, so that's three. Our destination register is still S0, M to reg is still 0, reg write is still 1. For our store word instruction, we're going to add the stack pointer to 4, which will give us that address. That's not 0, so our 0 line will be 0. Data 2 is still 17. Destination register is still S2. M read is still 0. M write is 1 m to reg we don't care about, and we don't want to write anything back to the registers. For instruction 3, we're doing a load word instruction, and the least significant 6 bits from our instruction are 0, so the function code will be 0. 
even though we're going to ignore that data. Data 1 is whatever the stack pointer is. Data 2 is whatever's in V0. Sign extended immediate is just 0. Our destination register is V0. Our RS field contains the stack pointer. Our T field contains V0. We want to add our sign extended immediate to something from a register, so we'll set the ALU source multiplexer to 1. We are doing a memory read instruction, so we'll set memory to 1, memwrite to 0. Now we want to be able to write the results from our memory read instruction back to the registers, so we'll set the mem to read multiplexer to 1. And we will want to write that back to the registers. The fifth instruction is now making its way into the pipeline, and we've pulled the instruction out of the instruction memory. And now we just need to increment the program counter. In cycle 6, our first two instructions are basically done, and we're just left with our last three instructions. So our store word instruction didn't read any data out of memory, so we'll have 0 for our read data. ALU result will just copy over from the previous stage, along with the destination register, the mem to reg signal, and the register write signal. Our load word instruction adds the stack pointer, to the immediate and comes up with something that is not zero. We will copy data 2 over. Destination register is v0 again. Mem read is 1. Mem write is 0. Mem to reg is 1. And reg write is 1. Our fifth instruction is an R type instruction, so this time the function code actually matters, and we can just read that from our instruction as being 22. Data 1 is the data in A0, which is the value 3. And then our second data is T2, which is 9. Sign extended immediate will give us 1022. Our destination register is V0. RS is A0. RT is T2. The ALU source multiplexer will be set to 0 because we want to take our second data from the registers and pass that to the ALU. We're not doing a memory read or write instruction, but we do want to store our results back to the registers. So one other thing we can do is we could update our registers with the results of our add immediate instruction. So we did an add immediate instruction and we set S0 to the value of 3. In cycle 7, we're just left with two instructions, three data coming out of the address indicated by our stack pointer gives us the value of 28 and then in the previous stage we should have stored the value of 17 into the address calculated by our store word instruction. Our ALU result just carries over from the previous cycle along with our destination register, the mem to reg, and reg write signals. Our subtract instruction is calculating 3 minus 9 which will give us negative 6. Since that's not 0 the zero line will also be zero. Data 2 is 9 again. Destination register is v0. Mem read is 0. Mem write is 0. Mem to reg is 0. And register write is 1. In cycle 8, we would store the value of 28 into the destination register of v0. Now we're just left with our subtract instruction. It's not going to access memory, so it's not actually reading anything out of data memory. ALU result is still negative 6. Destination register is still V0. Mem to reg multiplexer is still 0. And register write is still 1. In the last cycle, cycle 9, the results of our subtract instruction would be committed back to the registers, and we would update the value of V0 with negative 6. So this is what we would get for watching these five instructions as they move through our pipeline. They're going to update all of the interstage registers as they go with their temporary results. This allows us to keep track of what we need to do in the next cycle without having to maintain the entire pipeline for every instruction.